Welcome to another video, my AP Calc Champions. In this problem, we're talking about this cylindrical barrel. So a cylindrical barrel with a diameter of two feet contains collected rainwater, as shown in the figure above. The water drains out through a valve, not shown at the bottom of the barrel. The rate of change of the height of H of the water in the barrel with respect to time T is modeled by D of H over D of T is equal to one over 10 times the square root of H, where H is measured in feet and T is measured in seconds. And then it tells us what the volume of a cylinder with radius r and height h is. So part a says find the rate of change of the volume of water in the barrel with respect to time when the height of the water is four feet. Indicate units of measure. All right, so this is a classic related rates problem. What is this problem asking us to find? It's asking us to find dv over dt, the rate of change of the volume of the water with respect to time. And specifically, it's asking for that when the height is equal to four. What we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want to take the derivative of our volume. But here's the thing, um, our radius of this cylindrical barrel is not changing, it's static. So we don't actually even have a rate for that because our barrel is gonna have the same radius the whole time. So if it has a diameter of two feet, that means our radius is gonna be one foot. So we can go ahead and plug that in for V so that we can simplify our equation a little bit. So we get, pi times one squared times height. So we get that the volume of this cylindrical barrel is pi times height. So then when we take the derivative of it with respect to t, we would get dv over dt is equal to, we take the derivative of pi times h with respect to t as well. So that would be pi times dh over dt we can use our dh over dt equation and plug that in so that we have it in terms of just h. So we get pi times minus times the square root of h. And we mentioned that we want to find the rate of change of the volume of the water when h is equal to 4. So we can go ahead and plug 4 in for our h. So we get pi negative pi over 10 times the square root of 4 is 2. So we get negative pi over five as our answer. And remember it says indicate units of measure. So the rate of change of volume of water, what is volume measured in? Volume is measured in feet cubed. So this is gonna be feet cubed. And then what is our time measured in? It's measured in seconds. So this would be in, our unit of measure would be feet cubed over seconds. So our final answer is negative pi over five feet cubed over seconds. Moving on to the next problem, we have when the height of water is three feet, is the rate of change of the height of water with respect to time increasing or decreasing? Anytime you see is the rate of change increasing or decreasing, what well, you can basically translate that to is what sign is the rate of the rate of change of height of water? So a rate of a rate means that we're going to be taking the derivative of our rate of change. So if we have d of h over d of t is equal to minus 10 times the square root of, uh, I think it's h, right? The square root of h. That means we're going to be trying to find the second derivative. So we differentiate this with respect to time. So we can rewrite this as h to the one half power, that's the same thing as a square root, just so we can use our derivative power rule. We can get minus 10 times one half, and then we have h to the, we subtract one from our one half, so we get minus one half. And then since we're differentiating it with respect to time, we have a dh dt at the end. So we can simplify this some more. So this is gonna end up being minus one over 20. This negative one half is the same thing as saying one over h to the one half or one over the square root of h. So let's go ahead and rewrite this as that as well. One over the square root of h. Our d of h of t, it's just minus one over 10 times the square root of h. So we can go ahead, rewrite this as minus one over 20 times the square root of h times minus 10 times the square root of h. So these two square roots are gonna cancel out. So we are gonna get minus, a minus times a minus is gonna be a positive. So we get positive one over 200. 
And so we're being asked if the rate of change is increasing or decreasing since the second derivative is greater than zero, the rate of change of the height of the water when h equals three is increasing. This is our final answer for part B. Moving on to part C, we're being told at time t equals zero seconds, the height of the water is five feet. Use a separation of variables to find an expression for h in terms of t. So the equation we've been given is d of h over dt is equal to one over 10 times the square root of h. We have this in terms of d of h and d of t, but we want it in terms of just h and just t. So we're probably gonna wanna take the integral at some point. And then it also tells us to use separation of variables. What this means is we want all of the h terms on one side and all of the t terms on another side. So we can go ahead and uh, multiply both sides by d of t. So we get d of h is equal to minus one over 10 times the square root of h d of t. Then we still have an h on this side and a d of h on this side. So let's go ahead and divide by the square root of h. So we get d of h over the square root of h is equal to minus one over 10 d of t. And now we have actually separated our variables out. So we have our h side and we have our t side. You notice we don't actually contain a value that is strictly t. Um, but that's okay because we have d of t and then when we integrate it, we're going to have it in terms of t. Since we have already separated our variables, now we can go ahead and take the integral to have it just in terms of h and just in terms of t. So we can rewrite this as h to the minus one half d of h, the integral of that is equal to, um, we can just integrate the right side. It's a pretty simple integral, just gonna be minus one tenth times t plus c. To integrate the left side, we're gonna to want to apply the power rule of integration. So this is gonna look like, we're gonna add one to our exponents. So we're gonna h to one half, and then we're gonna put a two out front. So we get two times h to the one half. We can rewrite this as the square root of h is equal to minus one over 10 t plus c. All right, we have it in terms of t and h, which is technically what we wanted, but we also have this constant of integration that we need to solve for. So luckily we were being told that at time t equals zero seconds, the height of water is five feet. So we can use that information to solve for our c. So t is equal to zero, h is five. So we get two times the square root of five is equal to minus one times, uh, minus one over 10 times t, which is zero, plus c, this whole term goes away. So we get that c is equal to two times the square root of five. All right, so now that we have our c, we can go ahead and plug that in. So we get two times the square root of h is equal to minus one over 10 times t plus two times the square root of five. Our problem is basically asking us to solve for h is equal to blah, 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 blah. And you'll notice on our left side, we don't just have h, we have you know two times the square root of h. So we're gonna want to simplify things out. So we can divide both sides by two. So we get minus one over 20 times t, and then this two will go away. So we get plus square root of five. Now we are so, so close to just having an h on the left side. We just need to square both sides. So we get, so the square root and the square cancel out. So we just get h. h is equal to minus one over 20 times t plus the square root of five squared. And this is our final answer for part C. Now we have it just in terms of H on the left and we have T on the right. We don't have any constant of integrations. We have successfully solved for the height in terms of T. Hopefully that helps you out with this AP calculus problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.